Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston. I'm coming to you today with Thursday's Daily Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. I want to thank each of you for joining with me as we get together to study the Word of the Lord. Our lesson for today is <clears throat> the light of the world. The light of the world comes from John 1, verses 1 through 9. Our lesson today is speaking of John the Baptist that brought a uh, that was the witness of Jesus Christ that he was coming. The, uh, he was the first one that began to prophesy uh, after the 400 year period between the Old Testament and New Testament. He was the beginning to say, "Hey, it's time! It is time for the King to come." Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. But before we dive into our lesson, we want to have prayer. Then we're going to move right into the lesson. Dear God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. We thank you for watching over us, guiding us, and strengthening us. We thank you for watching us up and down the dangerous highway, day and night, Heavenly Father. We thank you for making a way out of no way. Lord, we thank you for taking care of us through this uh, d terrible ordeal that we're going through at this time, that if if our families or we are not having problems, we are we are worried and, and scared that it may come upon us, Lord. Jesus. We thank you for giving us a peace of mind, Heavenly Father, in this time of, of trouble in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that through you all things are possible, and we know that we are here as a blessing to others, and we ask you, Lord Jesus, to guide us and lead us, even and during this time. We, we give you the glory and the honor, and we bless your holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you are our all in all. We ask you that you would open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and give us wisdom knowledge and understanding from on high as we study and meditate on your word heavenly father you said in your word that we are to meditate on your word day and night and we ask you and seek of you that you shall be a blessing and guide us that our mind may be open to what you are teaching us at this time knowing that the holy spirit knows what each one of us need personally at this time in the name of jesus amen amen and amen all right, we're going to get ready to get started in this wonderful lesson we have. The light of the world coming from John 1, verses 1 through 9. And the scripture lesson text read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light, the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen, amen. This is a great and powerful lesson. Speaking here of John the Baptist, as he preached and talked and, 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 and brought people to the repentance to be ready for the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it says, in the beginning was the Word. He did not have a beginning himself, speaking of Jesus Christ, but existed from all eternity. As far as the human mind can go back, the Lord Jesus was there. He never was created. He had no beginning. A genealogy would be out of place in this gospel of the Son of God. The Word was with God. He had a separate and distinct personality. He was not just an idea, a thought, or some vague kind of example, but a real person who lived with God. The Word was God. He not only dwelt with God, but he himself was God. The Bible teaches that there is one God and that there are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
The three of these persons are God. In this verse, two of the persons of the Godhead are mentioned, God the Father and God the Son. It is the first of many clear statements in this gospel that Jesus Christ is God. It is not enough to say that he is a God, which is the little g, that he is God-like, which is a little g, or that he is divine. The Bible teaches that he is God, capital G. Verses 2 would appear to be, and is speaking of, mere repetition of what had been said, but actually it is not. This verse teaches that Christ's personality and deity were without beginning. He did not become a person for the first time as the babe of Bethlehem, nor did he somehow become a God, little g, after his resurrection, as some teach today. He is God, big G, from all eternity. I'm giving you the uh, uh, little g and, and big g so you know there's a difference in it. Amen. It said, all things were made through him. He himself was not a created being. Rather, he was the creator of all things. This includes mankind, the animals, the heavenly planets, the angels, all things, visible and invisible. Without him, nothing was made that was made. There can be no possible exception. If a thing was made, he made it. As creator, he is, of course, superior to anything he has created. All three persons of the Godhead were involved in the work of creation. God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 and 1. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, Genesis 1 and 2. And all things were created through him, Christ, and for him, Colossians 1 and 16b. In him was life. This does not simply mean that he possessed life, but that he has that he was and is the source of life. We, the word here includes both physical and spiritual life. When we were born, we received physical life. When we are born again, we receive spiritual life. Both come from him. The life was the light of men. The same one who supplied us with life is also the light of men. He provides the guidance, the direction necessary for man. It is one thing to exist, but quite another to know how to live, to know the true personal life, and to know the way to heaven. The same one who gave us life is the one who provides us with light for the pathway we travel. There are seven wonderful titles of our Lord Jesus Christ in this opening chapter of the gospel. He is called, number one, the word in verse 1 and 14. Number two, the light in verse 5 and 7. Number three, the Lamb of God in verse 29 and 36. And number four, the Son of God in verse 34 and, 30 and 49. Number five, the Christ or Messiah in verse 41. Number six, the King of Israel in verse 49. And number seven, list, tw list twice seem to be universal in application. The first four titles, each of which is mentioned at least twice, seem to be universal in application. The last three titles, each of which is mentioned only once, had their first application to Israel, God's ancient people. The light shines in the darkness. The entrance of sin brought darkness to the minds of men. It plunged the world into darkness in the sense that men in general neither knew God nor wanted to know him. Into this darkness the Lord Jesus came, a light shining in a dark place. The darkness did not comprehend it. This may mean that the darkness did not understand the Lord Jesus when he came into the world. Men did not realize who he really was or why he had come. Another man, however, is given in the New King James margin. The, uh, the darkness did not overcome it. Then the thought would be that man's rejection and enmity did not prevent the true light from shining. And verse 6 refers to John the Baptist, not the John who wrote this gospel. John the Baptist was sent from God as a forerunner of the Lord Jesus. 
His mission was to announce the coming of Christ and to tell the people to get ready to receive him. This man came to testify to the fact that Jesus was truly the light of the world so that all people might put their trust in him. If John had tried to attract attention to himself, he would have been unfaithful to his appointed task. He pointed men to Jesus and not to himself. That was the true light. Other persons down through the ages have claimed to be guides and saviors, but the one of whom John witnessed was the genuine light, the best and the truest light. Another translation of this verse is the true light which coming into the world gives light to every man. In other words, the expression coming into the world may describe the true light rather than every man. It was by the coming of the true light into the world that every man was given light. This does not mean that every man has received some inward knowledge concerning Christ. Neither does it mean that all men have heard about the Lord Jesus at one time or another. Rather, it means that the light shines on all people without regard to nationality, race, or color. It also means that by shining on all men, the Lord Jesus has revealed men in their true character by this coming into the world as the perfect man. He has shown how imperfect other men are. When a room is in darkness, you do not see the dust on the furniture. But when the light goes on, the room is seen as it actually is. In that same sense, the shining of the true light reveals man as he actually is. Amen. This is a great and powerful lesson as we see here. Uh, it, it had quite a bit with it, but it, it had so much to, to bring out and to show us who Christ is and the three Godheads and that they are all one. Amen. And that, that John the Baptist, that he brought forth his, uh, he did his task uh, very well. He made sure that Christ was the one that was lifted up and not himself. Amen. This is a great lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson. I would like to ask you if something is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit. Uh, if you would like to make a comment or have any questions, please, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. I also would like to ask, ask each of you, if you would, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and join me as we study and meditate on the word of the Lord, that we become more proficient doers of his word, that we have a better understanding of his word. And as he said in his word, that we are to meditate on his word day and night. And this gives us a grounds to go forward in. Amen. I pray you have a wonderful and blessed day.